So today we're going to talk about two important deeds associated with properties. They will be the deed of assent and the deed of conveyance. So let's begin with the deed of assent. What is the deed of assent? The deed of assent is used to transfer legal ownership of a property from the estate of a deceased person to the intended heir. Right? The required documents for this is the to get this kind of thing, to have this kind of deed, you need the last will and testament of the deceased and you need the death certificate of the deceased. Right? And of course it needs to be registered with the land registry. Right? The executor of the will is who is responsible for handling this part. Right? So a lawyer is the one that's supposed to draft up the deed of assent and um, who, is, who will oversee this more or less coordinate this aspect is more or less the executor of the will right so if you were to purchase a property part of the legal search will involve looking at deed of assent and seeing if if you trace back and you see that there was for instance a second deed of assent then you know that there is a problem with that property <clears throat> right so why a second deed of assent is a problem is you supposed to have one deed of assent to transfer legal ownership of a property from a deceased person's estate to the heir if you see a second deed of assent I don't know if if I don't know if someone could die twice, but that's the only way you could have two deeds of assent if somebody died twice. Is that possible? That they died, then they transfer legal ownership, and then they died again? Not possible. So normally in most countries, most states, a second deed of assent, the second one is seen as null and void. You're supposed to have one deed of assent. Somebody dies once. You transfer the the uh, legal ownership from that person's deceased person's uh, estate to the heir. That could happen only once, right? So if a legal search you find two, there's a problem. And if in a legal search you realize that somebody is trying to sell a property to you, and you realize that there is no trace, and we're going to talk about that later when we talk about deed of conveyance. So I'm going to get back to that example. Right? That's going to be very interesting. So let's go to the deed of conveyance. And that's a signed legal document that indicates that the deed or title for a property has been transferred. It will indicate who is being transferred from and who is being transferred to. So if you are trying to purchase a property from an individual and there's no evidence linking them to that land either the land was never transferred to them or they never purchased and even if they purchased the property it will be transferred to them you would have a deed of conveyance indicating that that land was transferred from a certain individual to them and therefore they could sell the property to you so if there's no deed of conveyance or anything linking them to the land or you know getting that property then that's a big problem that's a big red flag you should not continue with that purchase so let's go back now to the example of somebody being somebody dying for, for you know unfortunately dying you have a deceased individual and we transferred there's one deed of assent that transfers the legal ownership from the deceased individual to another individual right so let's use person a person b person c person a is deceased the property was transferred legal ownership is transferred from person a estate to person b who is the heir 
transferred to person B. So there's a deed of assent that covers that. Person C is trying to sell you that same property. So what should you look for? Well, there has to be some link of person C to that property. And the only way that person C could get that property is if person B died and there's another deed of assent that covers that, transfers the legal ownership from person B estate to person C. Or if person B sold the property to person C and there will be a deed of conveyance that will cover that. Clearly indicating that the property was transferred from person B to person C. Right? So if those two cases are not covered, if there isn't one of those cases covered, then we have a problem. Person C has to have been connected to that property either by deed of conveyance or deed of assent. Right? There are other ways also. They could have a, a, a deed of gift. There are other ways to do it also. Right? A deed of gift, we're going to talk about that in another segment. Right, but definitely there has to be some deed indicating making a link between person C to that property. If you do not, if you do a legal search and that is not the case, stay away from purchasing a property, do not continue with it. Right, because if you continue, you're gonna have a problem with problem person B now coming after you. Right, or you might actually be you, you I mean, you would have been you would have. Sp- sent the money to person C so it would have been scammed and person B could probably be still living on the property that happened many times in the past right so in legal searches it's very important to look at documents like these there are many deeds deed of conveyance right we spoke about the deed of assent we spoke about the deed of conveyance in another segment we're going to talk about deed of gift there is some, all of these deeds are very important and when you do legal searches, they, are, they show up in all of these legal searches. And this is how you know if there is any fraud that is connected to a property that you are purchasing. Anytime you are purchasing a property and there is any possibility of a fraud, if there is any link to fraud, you should not continue with the purchase. So, I hope this was very useful to you all. We spoke about deed of assent, we spoke about deed of conveyance. I hope it is very useful and beneficial to your uh, future land and property acquisition. And I'll see you all on the next one.